It's no secret that I have some deep-seated affection for older hardware. Stuff from the late 90s through mid to late 2000s has always fascinated me. Perhaps that's because this is the time I was starting to do some work in the industry, but I can never really afford the best of the best. I remember reading through PC World or Maximum PC when they used to release their yearly Dream System issue, where they aggregated all the high-end hardware that was out of the reach of almost everybody. I even did a short-lived video series called Then and Now, where I compared products from this era to modern standard bearers and see how far the industry has come. As I was working through that video series, I had an idea. What if I took these older parts and worked on my own personal dream system? Just 10 years late. I started off this journey back into time to 2007 with the NVIDIA 8800 GTX. Now, while one of these green beasts would run you about $500 when it was new and was a hell of a card back then, this is our dream system we're talking about. So let's roll with two of them instead. Although SLI is falling out of favor now, 10 years ago running two of these monsters was the pinnacle of gaming performance and something I knew I always personally aspired to, at least at that time. I complimented our SLI setup with Intel's Core 2 Extreme Q6850. I was able to nab this on eBay for about $50, but when this quad-core Extreme Edition chip was released in Q3 of 2007, it would set you back a cool 1500 bucks. Although at 130 watts it wasn't all that power efficient, it ran all cores at 3 GHz with an 8 meg cache, and was Intel's answer to AMD's FX series. The most difficult part to find in this build was honestly this original LGA775 cooler with copper slug. The cooler even came with pre-applied thermal paste and was fresh from the factory, never opened or installed. While a dream system would likely have included either a more substantial air cooler or some janky old school water cooled solution, I wanted to keep this build as authentic as possible. And in testing, the CPU ran just fine with this cooler in it. The motherboard I chose was the ASUS P5Q Deluxe. Just looking at all the colors, copper heat pipes, dangerously sharp fin stacks brings me back in time. Although technically released in 2008, this was the successor to several P35 boards and brought more stability for overclocking with better power delivery. Although this board technically doesn't support SLI, it does support Crossfire and has three PCIe slots on it. I was able to whip up a workaround and enable SLI support using some old tricks and janky software patches I remember having to mess around with back in the day. And check out our DDR2 memory from OCZ. It's perfectly gold and shiny and we have two 2 2GB DIMMs. Again, I suppose we could have gone with four, but these came in a package and 4GB was plenty 10 years ago. For storage, how can I not go with a 10,000 RPM Western Digital Raptor? It may sound like this, but it was the fastest option back then and one that went into many Ultimate Gaming builds. There are two parts of our build that don't come from the scrap heap, and that's the case and the power supply. I did consider going old school for both, but there were a few issues. First, I didn't really trust any of the really old used power supplies I was finding online, most of which were unbranded silver boxes. I felt power was something I could safely update without affecting performance, and it would also be better for our components. So I went with the Cooler Master MWE Bronze 650. Obviously, the case also isn't affecting our frame rates, so I chose this sufficiently mid-2000s gamery looking Cougar enclosure. It turns out assembling these older style systems isn't all that fun. Because I did cut myself several times snaking wires around the motherboard heat sinks, and trying to jam wires in behind the hard drive bays. But the final product is glorious.
running on the system was surprisingly still pretty good. I ran a mix of old school titles and new school benchmarks. Of course, the game that everyone wants to know about, can it run Crisis? Yeah, it can run Crisis. It can even run it at 1080p on high detail settings, where I was seeing anywhere from the high 30s to the low 50s in frame rate. Seeing as nobody was really gaming at 1080p in 2007, the lower resolutions of the day would have been no problem for our system. Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and Fear both were no challenge to our dream system at all, as each was running with a minimum frame rate of about 150. Both also climbed well over the 200 mark with regularity, again at 1080p and max settings. I then loaded up a game that's a few years old but still one of the most popular titles in the world, CSGO. At 1080p with settings on very high, I was getting a very playable 60 to 75 FPS experience. This is similar to the power of something like an RX 550, albeit at a much higher power consumption. And finally, I ran a few modern benchmarks, with Unigen Heaven averaging 27.2 FPS on high detail settings and tessellation off. Still pretty impressive, I think, and once again on par with an RX 550 or something in that area. Cinebench score was a respectable 272, about half of what you might expect from the brand new i380-100. I'm not sure what to do with this system now. It looks so bad and so good at the same time. I was pretty fortunate to find the parts in the condition that I did, and although I have a shelf in my office where I used to display some of this older hardware, maybe I'll just keep this machine as it is for now and break it out if I ever want to play some original Call of Duty. I'm in a position where I get to handle and test all kinds of high-end goodies. But sometimes it's good to remember where it all started, and for a lot of people, this is the kind of system they grew up dreaming about. I know I did. So that's all for my overly nostalgic look back at a 2007 dream system. Let me know down below what your old school dream system might be. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you like what I do here, and consider supporting me by visiting my merchandise store at the link in the description. As always guys, thanks for watching.